Welcome to the Connors Corner segment of Ask the Lawyer. With me, our next guest. When I was a little boy in 1962, I was watching the World Series, and Willie Mays was the center fielder for the Giants, but in right field was our next guest, Felipe Alou. And of course, a few years later, I was at a playoff game at Shea Stadium, and Hank Aaron's the right fielder, and Felipe Alou's the center fielder. And that's our next guest. How are you doing today, sir? Well, I'm doing good. I'm, I want to thank you guys for, uh, guys for this opportunity. I'm kind of old now with a bad bad wheel bad right leg they're going to replace my right knee uh next month so, but thanks a lot now you were one of the first players from the Dominican Republic what was that what was it like being one of a pioneer so to speak well i was uh, the uh, second player out of the Dominican Republic uh, Ozzy Virgil was the first player uh it was it was kind of tough you know i i, I played in the south uh, my first two team, uh, my first team was in Lake Charles, Louisiana, and uh, I got two, uh, nine at bats in uh, six weeks, <laughs> and they finally voted me out, and they sent me to Florida, where I live now. And I had to get used to segregation, but but you know what? I still live in Florida. What a beautiful state, <laughs> and what a beautiful people. Now changes had taken place, you know, uh, it's not uh, segregation. Uh, it's beautiful Florida now. I think that's worth it for some of the younger listeners. So when you first were playing professional baseball, you had to stay in segregated hotels in Florida? Yes. There were, yeah, well, we didn't stay much in hotels. You know, Florida, I played in the Florida State League. I also managed in the Florida State League. To me, Florida State League is the major league or the minor league with good weather, beautiful ballparks, a lot of water, a lot of fishing. Uh, during my time as a player in 1956, uh, you used to commute uh, the majority of the trips. A couple of places we had to stay in Tampa, Gainesville, places like that. And uh, usually there really was no hotel. There were some homes. There were some, like, guest house in the black section that would keep the players from the visiting team. So uh, I had uh, some great experiences with that. So uh, the white players used to go to a hotel, and the black and black Latino used to go to some homes in the uh, uh, on the other side of the railroad track. But, but it, it was kind of normal during those days. Do you know what year that changed? The year that it, that, that was changed? Yes. I, I really don't have a very good, because I, I, I let that league hit in 380, and I found myself playing in Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota, where I could stay anywhere. <laughs> I didn't do very well in Minneapolis the first year, and they sent me to Springfield, Massachusetts, where I could go anywhere. Go to a restaurant with the, with the white kids, uh, stay in the same hotel with them. I mean, if... It was a complete uh, uh, different situation there. Well, I came back to Florida when I was a, a older player with the, with the Braves, with the Milwaukee Braves. I was traded from the Giants to, to the Milwaukee Braves, and uh, to my surprise, the Milwaukee Braves were having the spring training in West Palm Beach, Florida. And uh, the West Palm Beach at the time was one of the toughest players a uh, uh, place for black players to find a place to eat at their ball game. But by the time I came back in 1964, uh, there was no trace of any of that. But I cannot tell you right now it happened in 1964. It must have happened a long time before that. We're talking about eight years. Well, let's get back. You, eventually, obviously, you're, you're playing in the minor leagues and you get your shot with the Giants. How did that occur? Well, I... Uh, I was fortunate. I, I, I had talent. You know, I gotta, I'm not bragging here. I, I was a javelin thrower in high school in the Dominican, and I could play a little bit of baseball. And uh, I wound up in the Pan American Games in 1955 in Mexico City with a baseball team by accident. I was supposed to compete in uh, track and field. And then one of the baseball players was, was sent back home because of uh, discipline. And they got me off the uh, track and field team, and they put me to play left field, and we wound up winning the gold medal in the 1955 uh, Pan Am game. We, we beat the U.S. team for the gold. 
And that's how I wound up being signed, not drafted. There was no draft then. I was signed out of the University of Santo Domingo by the Giants. And it only took me two years and two months to make it to the big league. It was a quick trip. And it was a surprise to me when they called me up from AAA Phoenix in the, in the Pacific Coast League. I, I didn't think I, I was ready for the big league. And in fact, I was not ready. It took me like three years to really become a, a solid major league. But, but, I, but I made it quick, thank God. 1962, you guys have a very interesting and a great season. Can you tell the audience about it? Well, we have maybe one of the greatest teams that I've ever been associated with. The Willies, uh, well, you know, to Willie McCoby, Willie May, the Cepedas, uh, the Mary Charles, some of the Lou. And um, we were threatening before that, but uh, with Alvin Dark as our leader, our manager in 1962, we beat the Dodgers in the, uh, the Beso 3 playoff. We finished out the 1962 season tied with the Dodgers. And it was not a one game to decide the championship. And we played three games, all three games, and we, we beat the Dodgers in, in Los Angeles for the championship. And on we went to play the World Series against the, the mighty New, New York Yankees. They married, they mantled, all of those great, they afford all of those great players they have. And um, Richardson, well, all, all of the great players. Uh, and it took seven games for, for them to beat us from one to zero. One of the greatest experience of my, my life to, to play in the World Series uh, against a tremendous ball club and against a tremendous a group of nice people, including the manager, Ralph Howe. What a, what a, what a great person, a great manager. He was, I had the... The fortune of play for him three years, you know, in New York when I was a, an old player. What a gentleman he was, and great manager he was. Now, you mentioned the manager of the Giants, and there was a little bit of a controversy concerning Al Dark. You, do you want to go into that at all? What was it like to play for Al Dark? Well, he was, you know, I, 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 that was a very good manager. Uh, he played me regularly. He, he was a young manager. Uh, we traded our shortstop, the Giants traded our shortstop, Andre Rogers, to the Braves for Alvin Dark, who was the shortstop with the Braves. So Alvin Dark came to the Giants to manage the Giants from being straight from not managing the minor leagues or anything, for just or coaching, just to manage the Giants. And there were many things. He knew the game great, but I believe he had his trouble managing a team that had a bunch of Latinos a bunch of blacks, and obviously the American players. It was a, a, a group. I don't believe Alvin understood what he was getting on, and at the beginning there were, there were, there were problems with him. Uh, he didn't want for us to talk Spanish. He didn't want for us to talk Spanish in spring training while we were in uniform. And uh, he was talking to the like of Orlando Cepeda, Hall of Famer. Later on, Juan Mary Shal, another Hall of Famer, they are Lou Brothers. Manny Moore. I mean, that, that kind of uh, man, you know, say, hey, don't talk, especially me. And this was in spring training, you know. We had 11 players in spring training that spoke Spanish. Uh, so we resisted that. That was the first hurdle there. And that created some situations. And, you know, that uh, he didn't believe that the black were hustling all the way or the Spanish were hustling all the way. But I got to say, you know, he changed. He was a great manager. Uh, Good strategist. Uh, I was surprised that the guy who never managed was such a good strategist. He was a real, real good leader. But he has his problem with minority. But later on, down the, you know, when he got older, he, he really he apologized to every one of us that he ran into it about his behavior, and it was beautiful. No, oh, very good. To see somebody repent from from the mistake he made with us, it was really beautiful. That's that's very good to hear. Now, the Giants, I don't know how many guys, how many outfielders you guys developed in the late 50s going into the 60s, all the talent that came through there. And, of course, a lot of, a lot of them were traded away, like your brother Matty, who really became a star in uh, Pittsburgh. Yeah, well, I, I wish we had a problem. I'm saying that, say us, because I, I'm still 
I'm still with the Giants. Uh, we we're looking for our field for the last ten years now. <laughs> yes. We we we. I don't know. It was just one of those cycles where outfielders came from everywhere, from Jose Cardenal to the to Adu Brothers to Willie May, Willie Kirkland, Jackie Brand, uh, you name it. And uh, we, we gave away, away a bunch of guys. Maria Lou was a guy that some of us who knew who Maria Lou could, could do if he played because we, we were teammates in winter ball. Uh, between Mario Lou and Manuel Mota, Manny Mota, the famous pinch hitter, they used to win every year the batting championship and win a ball, playing every day. It was either Mario Lou or Manny Mota. So when Mario Lou was traded to the Pirates, some of us said, you know, we traded a, a potential batting champion. And right away he, he won the, the batting championship uh, with the help of a coach, uh, Harry Walker, and obviously the manager who played him every day. But well, the Giants were blessed uh, with, with our field during those, those 10 years, you know, the late 50s and, uh, and, and the 60s. But we, we really, the Giants really didn't get the return for those good outfielders that they traded. Which, again, you guys made the World Series in 62, but it didn't happen again. Well, it took forever. Uh, I'm sitting here, and I had three World Series rings. <laughs> All of this was, 2010, 2012, and 2014, and it is really great to to have it. But sometimes you wish that, that you had one where you were a player, you know, or in my case, maybe even a manager. But uh, but I'm very proud, you know, I, and uh, I really appreciate the, the fact that the Giants brought me back to manage them. Had the privilege of, of managing Barry Bonds and some other great players. I finished finished up my career with the Giants. Uh, but I don't know. We, we never won a World Series when I was a player. Uh, we had some real good ball club, but we never did win it. We need to take a short break. We're talking to Felipe Alou, baseball great, on Connor's Corner. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Welcome back to the Connor's Corner segment of Ask the Lawyer. We're talking to baseball great Felipe Alou, who has a book out about his career. How did you get your first managing job? How did that develop? Oh, well, my first managing job... I almost got it <laughs> with the Giants, but that Ralph Hauk that I had just mentioned, you know, Ralph Hauk told me, Felipe, you know the game, you know, when I, I was a, a bench player my last year with the, with the Yankees, said, you're going to manage one day, but never take a one-year contract to manage. Don't, uh, might as well don't ever manage. If you take a one-year contract, you're going to get fired. So the Giants offered me a one-year contract. 1985, I didn't take. Then I became the bench coach of the Montreal Expos. And um, I was in the minor leagues right here in Florida for uh, six, seven years. And one day, Dan Duquette, you know, Dan Duquette is the GM of the Orioles now. I I owe it to him, you know. He, He really made me a manager in, in 1992. I didn't, didn't want to be the bench coach. I was tired of being a coach in the big league. Third base coach, first base coach, go back to triple A, go to A ball, go back. So I refused to take the job, but uh, Duquette's a nice nice young guy. And finally he convinced me to go to be the bench coach for Tom, Tom Ronald. And uh, in May, I wound up being the manager. The club was back in last place. Things weren't happening. Uh, a lot of promising young players that weren't, weren't developing. So I got a job. You know, it was an interim type of offer, and I took it. I was 56 years old, so I took it. And it turned out to be a blessing, you know, and I managed for uh, 15 years in the big leagues. Now, one of the things you had, what I think very few big league managers ever get the opportunity to do, you managed your own son. Yeah, that was great. Uh, it was pressure. It was pressure on me and pressure on him. You see, when the three brothers played in, in that famous game, 1963, there it, it was a little pressure, especially on me, because I, being the oldest, the oldest one of the three, uh, I felt like it was like I was their dad. Mm. Uh, 
Well, thank God we all three want to have a good career. We played 49 years of baseball at the Real Liberal. And then my son Moses uh, was uh, drafted by the Pirate. He was okay. And then there was a trade made with the Pirate while I was the bench coach in Montreal, and Moises came to the expo, but I was not managing him. It was Tom Runner who was the manager. <clears throat> but then when Tom Runner would let go, they want, I wound up being the manager of my son. That, that is really pressure. Uh, Moises was, he had a shoulder injury, and he wanted to play through the injuries, and he came to my office a few times demanding for me to play him, to put more pressure on me. But anyway, we, we solved it. We solved it. Uh, Jim Leland told me when that trade was made, he said, Felipe, your son is going to be a good player. So coming out of the mouth of Jim Leland, I, I believe he was going to be a good player. But, but I didn't know my son Moises as a baseball player because he was with the Pirates organization. I, I did not see him play much. But Jimmy Leland was right. You know, Moises became the best of the Alou players. <laughs> That's a pretty good group, though. So. <laughs> yeah, well, we are. Uh, we have one thing in common, and I said it in my book. All four are looking to hit a fastball. <laughs> yeah, but I believe, uh, you see, one guy, Mary Alou was 5'9", five 5'10". Five Jay Alou, 6'3", Moises Alou, 6'3", and I'm kind of in between there. Mary Alou left hand the guys, but all four of us could hit a fastball. So I, I believe if you are going to play, and if you are going to make money today, because we, we could hit fast balls, <laughs> three brothers, but we didn't make money because at that time there was no money for the play. But, but if anybody is going to make money, you better start hitting fast balls. If you hit enough fast balls, not all of them, but enough fast balls to make you money. So all four of us were born to hit fast balls. In retrospect, now how many years did you spend in the major leagues? Player, coach, manager? Well, 17 and 15 is 32, and as a coach for uh, 36 years in the big leagues. 36 years in the big leagues. That's quite an accomplishment. I mean, that is such a great accomplishment. It, I, you know, it, it really, there's no word to describe that. I mean, how many people spent 36 years in the big leagues? Well, I'm coming for it. We, we came from a family that there was a little town next to the, to the city of Santo Domingo that, that we were born there. And now it's part of the greater, greater Santo Domingo. There was no baseball park, no baseball field there. My dad never had a baseball uniform on him. But my mom was a daughter of a, a man from Spain. There was no baseball tradition whatsoever. But we, be, we believe it was a divine, it was a God-given blessing or talent that brought us out. Not one, but four, including Moises. And then he came Mel Rojas, my nephew. So really, you know, it is incredible that, that an, from an environment like that with no baseball part, uh, all of these players came out. I mean, it, it, is, it is hard to believe, but, but it, it did happen. Well, obviously we believe it. What do you want the reader to take out of your book? What, you know, they read your book. What do you want them to understand, to learn? Well, first, uh, quickly now, you know, this is a book that I didn't want to write. Uh, uh, because there are so many things that a man or a, a player or whatever, a writer or a journalist like you guys, uh, we we want to keep a bunch of stuff. And we always do take a bunch of things to the, to the grave. And I used to say, if I, because I did write a book when I was a player with the Braves, but a lot of water went on under the bridge out there, that divorces, releases, injuries, revolution in my country segregation, things like that. But uh, my friend, Bruce Bochy, who was a manager with the Giants, he influentially on that. Uh, he told me, Felipe, you have a story to tell. And it, it really, what, what, I, what I do here, because I, I, he got me with a great writer, Peter Carasortis. He wrote beautifully. I want people to know a little, a little bit more about the Alou brothers. And about this family that I'm just talking about, and about our country, and about who I really am. I mean, this is a, this book is 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 not another baseball book. Oh, there's a lot of baseball in that book, but there are some other stuff that I believe. I know there might be a few people don't like some of the stuff I said about my country was occupied by by the by the, uh, 
by the U.S. Well, I was playing ball in uh, in Milwaukee, things like that, you know. And uh, does that have anything to do with baseball? Yes, because then when that happened, we didn't play baseball in my country for two years. Uh, stuff like that, it is connected with baseball, but it's not all baseball. And I said to myself, you know, there's a baseball book from great players. Uh, my book is, is not a 100% baseball book. Uh, we were rejected. Uh, there was a, a publisher that rejected me and my writer. They said, well, Felipe now is relegated to be a special uh, assignment guy uh, uh, with a general manager. I mean, that, that, I, I know that's what I am <laughs> now. You understand? Right. But, but, uh, but I, I hope, I got to say this, is, so if one person, just one, well, it changed their life to be a better person because he read my book. That's what I want. It only takes one person to, to change many people. Many people. That, that's the purpose of this book. Maybe change one person for their, bad, for their better. Well, if you do that, that's one more accomplishment added to all the accomplishments you've already achieved. Thank you very much for sharing your time. We wish you the best. Hope you're feeling better soon. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. I'm going to have knee replacement on the 2nd of July. Pray for me. We will pray for you. Thank you. Good luck, Felipe. Thanks.